Thanks for joining us today. We're here to talk about a bill that was introduced Sunday night at about 9 p.m. It's 2,702 pages long. The American people are still digesting it. Uh, members of the Senate are still digesting it. Look, we're in a period of great inflation, brought on by a period of almost unfettered, unrestrained federal spending. It bears no connection, it seems, to the laws of mathematics or to the amount of money that were brought in. This bill would spend a staggering $1.2 trillion. It would be yet another inflation bomb in an economy that's already been carpet bombed by other inflation bombs. I, I grasp the fact that it's difficult to put together a bipartisan package. I have nothing but respect for each of our colleagues who were part of this effort. I also am willing to acknowledge that the bill does a lot of good things and would help a lot of deserving beneficiaries. There are a lot of people who would benefit in a lot of ways from it. But there is a huge problem with it. It is not paid for. The reason that we know that that's a problem, that it's not paid for, is that the one consistent refrain that you hear from its sponsors, other than the fact that it's bipartisan, which, which we know and, and which we respect, is the fact that it's paid for. They'll say over and over again that this bill is paid for, but when you look at the, pays, the pay fors, they don't add up. When you have pay fors that don't actually pay, you're just going to add to the debt and deficit, and this isn't a good time to be doing that. And so you, you peel back some of these, and you see that it repurposes COVID money, but it repurposes COVID money that wasn't going to be spent in the first place. You can't propose one day to cover the moon in yogurt and propose the next day to not cover the moon in yogurt and regard that as a pay for when you didn't spend the money that was going to be required to cover the moon in yogurt. You also don't have as a legitimate pay for a plan at some point in the next seven years to sell oil out of the strategic petroleum reserve. Look, we don't know when that sale will actually occur, if in fact it ever will occur nor do we know what the price of oil will be at the time, nor do we know what other strategic considerations might come into play with regard to our usage of oil at the time. It's why we have a strategic petroleum reserve in this first place, is to take care of contingencies that are very difficult to predict seven years out. We've also got a, a reporting requirement for cryptocurrency that's vague, it's infeasible, and it's quite half-baked. We've got pension smoothing that is the budget gimmick of all budget gimmicks. We've got future spectrum auctions and some past spectrum auctions that they're trying to take credit for to suggest that that can somehow be used to fund this bill. And we've got a few things that are really scary to a lot of people, including a pilot program that would involve measuring the number of passenger miles driven by passenger vehicles. There are a whole lot of reasons why people are concerned about this. The nature of a pilot program, it's like a pilot light. You're piloting something because you're spearheading something. People are very upset. They're concerned about the idea of the government tracking where Americans are driving, how much they're driving, and the verification procedures that would be involved in that. Then you've got the mortgage G fees to be charged by Fannie and Freddie. Look, uh, this is um, important in many parts of the country. I know it's certainly important in Utah as housing, health care, as groceries, and gasoline, and everything in between is getting more expensive. But let's take housing in particular. People throughout Utah, especially along the Wasatch Front, are finding it increasingly difficult to get into a home. First-time home buyers are having an especially difficult time. To increase fees, fees that uh, were developed at a time when we had the opposite problem, when there was deflation in the housing market, to adopt those fees now, not to make Fannie and Freddie more solvent, not to make these home loans more sustainable, but rather to pay for a spending bill, uh, it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. In fact, it seems to be uh, taking money from the wrong people in order to spend more money through the federal government. Look, people are going to have different views on this, and I, I understand and respect their right to disagree. But the fact that something is bipartisan doesn't mean that it makes sense for the American people. It doesn't mean that it won't be harming poor and middle class Americans in order to give more money to an already bloated federal government. And I've got grave concerns with it. We're going to hear now from Senator Scott, and then from Senator Johnson, and then from Senator Hawley.